Today we're going to be talking about using deep diving crankbaits and specifically several tips that I think will really help you out this spring. Hi there, welcome to the Bass Fishing Life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers. Hey, before that video gets going, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and punch the notification bell, and then head on over to our blog site, thebassfishinglife.com. Thank you so very much. Well, I've read a lot of your comments on our YouTube videos and in our Facebook group, and even some people have messaged me directly just saying, wow, this spring so far has been really hard for them. And if they have been getting bites, a lot of them are just those tiny fish, okay? Those little dinks, those one pounders or smaller, which anytime the fishing is tough, it's great to catch anything. But the questions have been, what can I do to try to increase the size of the fish that I'm catching? And when things are really hard and you're doing a lot of locating, deep divers are good all spring, summer, and fall, but I really like them in the spring because they do lots and lots of searching where we can narrow down where those fish are sitting at. So I want to go over a few tips today that are very simple that will help put you in some higher percentage areas and make sure that you're using these baits to their maximum effect efficiency to help you out this spring until that bite really gets going good. The first thing that we want to do is always make sure that the bait is running true. Now most manufacturers the baits are coming out of the box really good, much better than they were two three decades ago. But just go ahead and put that bait out, flip it out there, and then reel straight back and if the bait is running true, it's going to track right towards you. It's not going to run to one side or the other. Now, if it is running to one side or the other, we do have a video on tuning crankbaits. I will go ahead and drop that link down below. But this one right here is running good right out of the box. The next thing that we want to do is make sure we're using a proper crankbait rod and setup, okay? Especially if you've got the budget for it, um, buying a rod that is specifically for crankbaits makes a big, big difference. This one here is actually a seven foot six crankbait rod. Uh, this is a David Fritz model, and if anybody knows David Fritz, you know he's a crankbait guru. And the reason I like a long rod is I can make ultra long casts, and we'll talk about that in just a second. And this particular crankbait rod is also a composite. In other words, it's graphite and glass. And you may be wondering, why would I want a composite rod with crankbaits? Well, one, it's going to be less sensitive than a straight graphite rod. And when you're fishing crankbaits, you don't want to feel that bump, that thump, and rip that bait right away from them. You want a little bit of give. I'm always looking for more of that pressure bite, like, oh, there's something on there, it loads up, and you got just a touch of pressure. And the other um, thing that is good with crankbait rods is they're gonna be more of a medium power rating, sometimes medium heavy power rating, but the action is gonna be moderate, okay? Moderate or even slow, and by that I mean, there's gonna be a lot of flex in the tip before it gets down to the backbone of the rod, and that really helps the hookup ratio. So if your budget allows, go ahead and make sure that you have a rod that is dedicated for crankbaiting, and if you've gotta get just one, I like to get one that's longer than seven foot to make those ultra long casts. Now, that leads me to the next tip ultra long cast. Why do we need to make those long casts? Well, as a crankbait is getting down to depth, okay, there's some out there that have circuit board type uh, wafer bills and, you know, guys will go ahead and file down the bills on these things, but it, it's really difficult to get that true 90 degree dive plane where it goes really straight down. Most of the time your crankbait is coming down at an angle, 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 and then it finally gets to depth and then works across the bottom. So if you make a really long cast past your target, 
that area that you really want to zone in on, the bait will be at depth by the time it gets to it. So that is where those ultra long casts make a huge difference. And with a seven foot six rod, you can really get that thing sailing it out there. Um, so make sure that you throw past your ideal target zone, way past it, so the bait has got time to get down to depth. And on this particular setup, I am running straight fluorocarbon because fluorocarbon sinks and that helps me get a little more depth as well. So that is something, that, I mean, I've used monofilament on crankbait rods too, but I really like the straight fluorocarbon, which is what I have on here. Now, the next thing is looking for transitions. We've talked a lot about transitions and how they make edges when we're you know fishing shallow cover but when you're deep diving a crankbait you want to keep in mind those transitions or edges as well we're coming up to a point here and this point on this side way back in here it's about 35 foot we got about eight foot of water up here and on this far side of it is pretty rocky and then it drops off into about 15 foot of water and it's got a good weed line right there and that is the edge or the transition that i'm going to focus on now i picked a crankbait this is actually a 6xd that gets down to about that 19 foot range and i picked one that gets a little deeper because i want to ensure bottom contact when you're fishing for these pre-spawn bass and even all the way through the post-spawn in the spring bottom contact is just critical you're going to get way 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 more bites when you're contacting bottom and something that's easy to do is make sure you select the crankbait that dives deeper than the depth that you are targeting especially if you want your crankbait to move slow just a slow crawl as it goes across the bottom and that leads to my next tip is vary the speed there are times when those bass want that crankbait really scooting along and then there's other times where they want it more of a slow crawl so you've got to vary your speed as you're fishing until you can dial in what they're really looking for so if you use a crankbait that gets down a little bit deeper than the depth that you are fishing you're going to be able to fish it much 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 slower than if you've got to really just burn that bait to try to get to that depth so I tend to crawl the bait more than I really burn it I, I just like to really feel it digging and bouncing off cover like right now it's just really deflecting and pounding off of those rocks and I, I just feel like I'm gonna get a strike when I feel it deflecting and doing that so I like to go a bait deeper bait larger than the target zone I'm looking for. And here you can tell I got down to that depth because I'm pulling up some of that nice green vegetation. So that's working out perfect. So this is that transition we're talking about. I'm gonna shoot right down this edge and run that bait down there. And you can see with this crankbait rod, it's got a lot of flex to it. These deep divers, they pull. They really pull hard. Just work it, feel it, feel it, feel it. Don't be afraid to stick that rod tip down in the water water either if you're trying to get, you know, a little bit deeper. Matter of fact, Paul Elias won a Bassmaster Classic uh, kneeling on the boat deck to get a couple more feet on his crankbaits. Kneeling and reeling is what they call it. So this is what we're looking for. Now, in the springtime, like we've talked about in other videos, there's a lot of hunting that goes on. You're not necessarily gonna pull right up to a spot and start to load up. So keep working down these transitions and these edges until you find where those fish are sitting. And even if you catch a little 10 incher, don't just throw it back in the water and you know move on down your way is, you know, go ahead and put that fish back, but realize that they may have just identified where that school is at. You're looking for one. You're looking for one fish to reveal the location. 
My last tip would be for you to face into the current whenever possible. Now, even if you're on a lake that does not have natural current to it flow with, you know, creeks dumping in and then the river dumping out on the other side of it like a reservoir, is that wind is going to oftentimes give you current as well and the bass love to face into it. So even on a lake or pond that you have no natural current in it, go ahead and use that wind face into it because it will position the fish, especially on those super windy days, the wind will definitely position the fish. Well, I hope that these tips help you out with your deep diving crankbaits this spring and you're able to use them to locate some big bass and have an excellent day. And don't forget to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life for the bass fishing life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers.